In this video, we're going to learn how to print an array using C. The first thing we'll do is declare and initialize the array. We'll have here int array to declare an array that will store int values, and the name of the array is array. Next, we can initialize the array. We'll have here is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the array is going to store the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We call these values the elements of the array. And the elements of the array are each stored at a particular index. So for example, this first element here is stored at the index 0. The next element is stored at the index 1. And then we have 2 and 3 and 4. So what we could do to print out the elements of the array is print them out individually using the array index. So for example, we could have here printf and then percent %d to output an int value, and backslash n to output a new line character, so that any further output will occur on the next line. Then we'll have here array at the index 0. This will print out the first array element. We could do the same thing for the remaining four elements. We could have here printf, and then percent %d backslash n, and then array at the index 1, printf, percent %d backslash n, array at the index 2. And we'll do the same thing for the last two elements. We'll have printf, percent %d backslash n, array at the index 3, and printf, percent %d backslash n, and then array at the index 4. Now you'll notice these lines look pretty similar. The only difference is this number here. For the index of the element, in the array to print out. Let's try this out though. If we save, compile, and run the program, we do get our array elements here. We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is working. But like we said, these lines of code look very similar. Really the only difference is that index number there. When we need to repeatedly execute the same statement or the same block of statements in a C program, it's often going to be a good idea to use a loop to solve that problem. So for example, we could have a for loop with a counter variable that goes from zero up until four. We could then use that counter variable to access and print out each element in the array. So for now, let's actually comment out this code so that way it doesn't execute. We'll wrap it in a multi-line comment. Then let's try to make this loop. We'll have a for loop here with an int counter variable i. We're going to declare i, and we're going to initialize it to 0. Then, we're going to stop the loop when i is no longer less than 5. So, so long as i is less than 5, the loop is going to continue. Now, with each loop iteration, we're going to increment i. This means with each iteration of this loop, we're going to increase i by 1. Then, in our loop body, for now, let's just print out i. We'll have here printf, and then percent %d, backslash n, and we'll output i. Let's try this out. If we save, compile, and run the program, we see that i goes from 0 up until 4 by 1. We get 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if we look at the array indexes we need to access, that's exactly those indexes. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we've made this loop specifically to get those numbers, and in this order, we initialize the counter variable i to 0. 0 is less than 5, so the loop is going to execute. We're going to output 0, then i is going to be incremented by 1, and i will now be 1. 1 is still less than 5, so we're going to output 1. i will be incremented by 1, I will now be 2. And that will continue up until we output 4, when i is 4. Then i is going to be incremented by 1, i will be 5, 5 is not less than 5, and the loop will stop executing. So what we could do is instead of outputting i here, we could output the value in the array at the index i. Let's try this out. If we save, compile, and run the program, 
we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the elements in our array. So this is how we can output the elements of an array. Now we could format the output differently than this. Right now, we're outputting each array element on a new line. Instead of this, we could separate each array element by a space. So for example, let's comment this out. Then here we'll have printf, percent %d, and this time we'll have a space instead of a new line. Then we'll have the array at the index i. Once we're done this loop, we'll have output each array element separated by a space. We'll output a new line here after the array elements to ensure that any further output from our program starts on the next line. We could save, compile, and run the program, and now we get the array elements on the same line separated by a space. Instead of a space, we could separate the array elements by a comma. So again, let's comment this out. And this time we'll have printf, percent %d, and then comma, array, at the index i. We can save, compile, and run the program, and now we get our array elements separated by a comma. The only problem is, this last element here has a comma after it. We might not want to do that. That doesn't look very neat. What we could do instead is only print out the comma if it's not the last element in the array. So we could have this, print out the array element, and if i doesn't equal four, the last index in the array, then we'll print out a comma. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we now get our array elements output separated by a comma, but that last element no longer has a comma after it, and that's because we only output the comma if it's not the last index in our array. Now in this version of our program, we could say that we've hard-coded the length of the array in the sense that the length of the array is this literal value here, five. And this value here, four, that is one less than the length of the array, which we know is going to be the last index in the array. The only problem with this is if the length of our array changes. Like let's say we have a new element here, six, at the index five. We now have to update our code here. We would have to change this here to six and this here to five in order for it to work. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we will put the array successfully again. But we had to make two changes for that to work. What we could do instead is use a variable that stores the length of the array. So for example, we could have here int length is equal to, and let's say seven now, and we'll add a seventh element to our array that's going to be at the index six. Then here, what we can do is change this to length and this here to length minus one. So what we're doing is using this length variable to determine when our loop should stop and when to stop outputting the comma. If we save, compile, and run the program, it's going to work. But now, if we make subsequent changes to our array length, it's still going to work. So if the length was eight, and we now had an element eight at the index seven, if we save, compile, and run the program, it's going to work. So it's probably a better idea to not hard code with a literal value the length of the array. It's likely going to be a better idea to use something like a variable or maybe a preprocessor constant for the length of the array. Now we could also put the array index and maybe even the array name when outputting each array element. So for example, let's comment out this line here and this line here. And we'll have one more version here. We'll have here printf and then array, open bracket, percent %d, close bracket, is equal to percent %d, followed by backslash n for a new line. So now, we're putting the name of the array, and then percent %d for an int value, is equal to percent %d. 
Then we'll have here i to output the array index here, and then array at the index i to output the value stored in the array at that index here. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we now get the elements of the array output, but this time we're also outputting the array name and the array index. So this is how we can output the elements of an array using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.